was an urban planner and switched over to cartoons. Oh. Uh, and uh, he used to, you know, share a few things. We, we took meetings. He would just put it in a small thing and say, Sir, this is okay. So, <laughs> yaar, tumne to you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So that's the power of cartoons. That's, that's true. Very well said. Very happy to have you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dheeraj, uh, Pratishtha, if you would like to introduce yourselves, we were just uh, saying hello to each other. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Pratishtha. Your voice is very low. Hello. Yeah, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Pratishtha. Uh, I'm a freelancer as a subject expert in electronics. Yeah. Okay, nice. Good to, good to have you here. Uh, Hitesh, uh, Faria, could I start? Uh, yes. You all are on mute. Yeah, Faria, mm -hmm. can you uh, introduce? Okay. Okay, I'll just go with the introduction. So hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. So today we have here with us, uh, Miss Ashwini Menon. Uh, she was a weekly cartoonist with the Hindu and created a strip called uh, Ecotism. Today she creates a strip called Overheard for the Protected Area Update Newsletter. Both these strips focus on uh, sustainable development issues in India. She was the only Indian among the finalists of Women Cartoonist International Award 2019. Her cartoon strips have been exhibited at Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Gebrovo, Bulgaria, and Norkoping, Sweden. She studied her post-graduation in graphic design from the National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, and her post-graduate diploma in Environment and Sustainable Development from uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Previously, she studied her graduation in applied art from Rachna Sunset College of Applied Art and Craft, Mumbai. She worked as a user experience designer for a year and a half at Microsoft India before coming back to Mumbai in 2016. It is then she established her current practice under her studio named Ashwini Menon Visual Design Studio to work on thoughtful branding, graphic design and illustration assignments. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Faria. I'm glad to see you all. Uh, feels like uh, I, I actually am not a fan of uh, virtual meetings. I, I really love physical presence, but uh, this I, I see this as a nice cozy room of some enthusiastic people ready to cartoon. So we have timed this workshop for 40 minutes. So I'm trying to do my best uh, so that you all can make the most out of these 40 minutes. Okay, so I'll just share my presentation. Uh, if any technical glitches happen, uh, I'm sure we all are used to it by now uh, through all these years. So let's, uh, I, I just uh, request we be patient and we'll sail through it. So here I'm presenting. Yeah, I hope you all can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to keep this, uh, okay, maybe I'll minimize it. All right, so yes, so welcome uh, to the workshop. Uh, so, just before I proceed, I want to tell you what the word cartoons means, okay? So, cartoons is nothing but a stylized drawing. Uh, as kids, you must, we all have grown up watching some cartoons. So, if you see, they all, uh, okay, I, I'm getting these uh, notifications. I'm just going to admit, okay. So, uh, we see these uh, cartoons, uh, we've seen these cartoons since childhood. So, if you see, they're all stylized you know, if you say the superheroes or some, uh, say, even the Scooby-Doo dog or uh, say Cartoon Network, Powerpuff Girls or He-Man, all these are stylized, so they are cartoons. But what we are actually talking about are ca cartoon strips or comic strips. So when these same, uh, when the same cartoons are used to tell a story, a longer story, it becomes a strip. So, what will we do today? Uh, so, uh, Hitesh, do I need to edit them or no, no. Uh, do I just uh, ignore I'll Yeah, ignore please them. ignore that and then you okay. please uh, go on to okay. the workshop. So, uh, uh, how do I uh, let this? Uh, okay, I'll ignore that. Okay, so what we'll do today 
so first 10 minutes i'd like to discuss my journey as to how i landed here uh, why how do how, how i've ended up being a cartoonist uh, and what and we'll understand a little about cartoon strips in general so we'll spend our first 10 minutes around that then I will show some examples of my published uh, cartoons. Uh, I, I won't be able to show all of the works, but I try to show works where you all will have something to take away. And then the last uh, 15 minutes is uh, why you're actually here is to try and make your own strips. Uh, but more than that, see, you can make your own strips even once you've understood the points I'm telling. So don't focus on making really good strips right now, but focus on taking in uh, notes and understanding from uh, this uh, this particular session and please feel free uh, to uh, note down your questions uh, we have a question answer session in the end or if you really have some uh, you know very interesting question you want to ask right now please feel free to interrupt me so moving ahead so my journey uh, i was a child uh, who always used to draw uh, it was it, I, I was not good at math and all that and i always waited for my uh, drawing teacher to come to school and uh, when children wanted to bunk those uh, lectures i used to be the one sitting and drawing i used to spoil my uh, you know my fellow classmates uh, textbooks by scribbling things on that so I was someone who loved to draw i was i'm also uh, of course like all of us uh, we have been nature lovers, but I was a nature lover who was absolutely unaware of developmental issues till, uh, say, even 2014. That was in my senior years of college. Uh, I was I used to just love wildlife, nature, try to name birds and all that, but I was not aware of developmental issues. And uh, through some projects, when I when those windows opened up, I saw that it's a never-ending subject. Like the, the things we are doing to our environment those issues the things that we are reading even today so i slowly started getting aware of them but then another thing interesting thing happened which i mentioned in point three that i am not that good at confronting people i was not able to speak up and say hey what you're doing is wrong especially even you know in my own close-knit circle of uh, people who i love like my friends family my colleagues at work i was not able to tell them that uh, uh, you know, maybe you should cut down on those plastic bags you are taking from the vegetable vendor. So what I did is I used to channel those thoughts into cartoons. So that was how that thing came up for me. I never wanted to be a cartoonist as such. I like to draw. I wanted to say something. So it automatically became a strip for me. So and I started posting these one, you know, a square shaped cartoon strip with just one panel on social media. And then eventually, uh, you know, I, I had got in touch with the editor of the Hindu and she uh, liked the strips and she said that, uh, uh, you know, make it of uh, this XYZ size and it got started getting published in the Sunday newspaper, which is circulated across India. It was, it was a big thing for me uh, because that supplement was not carrying any cartoon strip till then. And mine was the first cartoon strip that actually uh, you know, spoke on sustainable development issues in that supplement. So, uh, Sunday to Sunday, I created strips for them for two years. Uh, that was around 108 cartoon strips. And uh, eventually, like the, uh, the the newspaper underwent a change, and then uh, they had to, you know, stop my strip. Uh, but then I have continued to publish my strips through Protected Area Update, which is a bi monthly newspaper. So, this is uh, basically my journey. I'm a full time graphic designer. So, I have a small studio that I run, but cartooning is something I do parallelly. So, what makes cartoon strips impactful? Okay. You, of course, you all know cartoon strips are impactful, but let us. Let us dissect and see what is it that uh, really makes it uh, so lovely for us to uh, enjoy. So the first thing is that it makes things brief. Everything is made concise. It uses lesser elements. It occupies less space. So the, that that is the main uh, the main reason why we love cartoon strips. See, uh, if you take an example, you're given a resource paper of say 40 pages to read versus someone has understood that paper and made say an illustration out of it or a poster out of it or an infographic out of it. You would rather look at that. As human beings, we like to see things which are more visual, less of words. 
I'm not talking that, I'm not saying that you don't love reading. Of course, even people who love reading would get attracted to visuals because that's how our, uh, you know, our visual sense works. The second thing is there is humor and punch. And that is, that is what, uh, you can't have strips without a punchline. I'm not saying every time you will burst out laughing. No, it's not that. Even this slight smile in your mind or that array moment, oh wow, this, this really hit me. You know, that, that is something the cartoon strip gives you with. So that is something your strip should have. And many a times, you know, these uh, strips are wordless. So that you sometimes, you'll see, so we call them like, uh, like you call silent films. The same way, you will also see some silent cartoon strips. I'll show you some examples of those. And when they are wordless, it, the, the amount of people it reaches is so much more, right? Because there's no language barrier. So these are three things, uh, according to me, that make uh, cartoon strips impactful. And how are they used today? Uh, if you see uh, what cartoonists do, what are newspaper cartoonists or cartoonists on the web today, what they do is they give a parallel com commentary on current issues. It's when you read issues or when you see things around you, there, there are some uh, judgments that come in your mind or some uh, opinions that come to your mind. So these people put it out. Many a times it resonates with what most people are thinking. Uh, and the second point is they talk of issues that are not easily discussed. So that is why many people call cartoonists as heroes because you put out a subject which people are not talking about but it should have been discussed okay so that is one thing third the reason for our workshop today we want viewers to think and eventually act so when i say cartoons for change you're actually aiming for point number three you have a certain message in your mind and you want the viewer to think and eventually act like i initially mentioned about plastic bags so if I, so when I made a cartoon, I wanted that person who was using a cartoon, uh, using a plastic bag to rethink about the use. And the fourth is, it gives the viewer a new perspective. So it's not always that you will agree with everything, uh, you know, a cartoonist is saying, but at least have, at least as a viewer, your perspective widens that, oh, people also have this chain of thought. Uh, I personally believe uh, uh, that there is no for and against in this, uh, in this, uh, you know, this uh, fight against uh, environmental destruction or, uh, you know, sustainable development. It is, uh, we have to work together. That's the only way out. So if there is someone who is not, like, again, going back to the plastic bag example, why is this person not carrying a cloth bag? Why is a plastic bag so easily available for them? that they don't, they don't even have to think a millisecond before picking it up. So you broaden your perspective uh, by reading and creating these cartoons. The cartoon strips also have a limitation. Now, I have, uh, I have uh, told all the wonderful things it can do, but uh, this is from my own personal experience. I've, I've seen that it is difficult to measure real world impact as such to a cartoon strip that even if i am like i if i made cartoon strips on sustainable development i don't know how many people really put that uh, sensitivity into action it's very difficult for me to uh, claim that uh, not just cartoon strips if i may say it's many things that are visual design related like we even do uh, say logos and brochures it's very difficult to say their impact but i'm not saying that they are not useful they are they are a very key ingredient in making a systemic change like all these different kind of uh, workshops that we are doing today uh, you know uh, in through this conference i feel they all are related uh, and none can survive without each other like there will be a scientist but he can't put his work out if uh, you know till someone uh, to, to save the poster or the book or the campaign is well designed so all roles are important but for a cartoon strip it's difficult to claim that oh, it has done the job and second i feel sometimes it can oversimplify an issue uh, so, I mean, so oversimplify in the sense like when you have to create a joke you know you have to create a story you have to simplify 
the story to some extent otherwise you will get boring if you try to tell all the points it is not not going to be a strip anymore it's just going to be uh, you know instead of putting it in a paragraph you are putting it with a drawing so you have to simplify it but sometimes it's difficult to cover all aspects so it might over simplify person who is cutting the tree as the bad guy maybe that person's livelihood is dependent on it and that person is from a marginalized com community so those things it's difficult to cover all of that in a single strip so those these according to me are limitations so now yeah so now let us uh, see some strips so i'll show you some of my works are we good are, are you all able to hear me can i get a yes from someone okay. yes 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 okay great great okay so Yes, now before another text text slide. I know you're bored of seeing these you want to see images, but I want you all to not just observe these cartoon strips. I want you all to uh, ask these questions. How is this issue simplified for the cartoon? Okay, how many panels are used? Now, if you see my Hindu cartoon strips, that was a brief given to me that you have to start with two panels and or three panels. So it fit it in that size. How? How is that? Uh, is that a is that an aircraft or what is it? Or what is? Oh, it? that's. Uh, I'm very sorry. That's a railway track which is very close to where I am. So I'm unable to. I I try to speak loudly, uh, even more loudly, till the train passes away. So one is. Uh, yeah. One. So second. So you have a cartoon for sound pollution. Yeah, yeah, I have it. <laughs> it's not in the deck right now, but I had I had made one. Yeah. So, uh, three is how is it suiting the medium is carried on. Now, if you decide to make a cartoon for posting on Facebook versus you decide to make a cartoon to put on a newspaper, they both will have a different uh, feel to it. How many characters are used? What demographics do these characters represent? And um, how am I showing these people dressed? Are they dressed like? Uh, the Western crowd, are they dressed like the Indian crowd, rural, urban? What are these things I'm trying to show? What is the background? What's the weather? What's the geography? What is the time of the day? What other details have I added? Uh, and how do these cartoon strips make the, how is the cartoon strip making the reader feel? Is he feeling angry or just blah? Or is it is it funny? Uh, what drawing style is used? Now with me, you will not see much variation of drawing styles because every artist has their own style and they end up drawing it in that way. But you can just see if, even if I have made some variations in the style. And the last is something which is very important for you. If you're serious about cartooning or any skill set for that matter, see how you can improve it. Uh, especially in the field of creativity, there is no upper limit. You know, there is no right answer. So it's not necessarily the cartoons which I'm showing are the best cartoons possible for that subject. So if today, even if I revisit them, maybe I can think of an even better idea. So even when I'm showing you these cartoons, if you like a particular cartoon, just rethink how can I make it better? What can I improve in it? Or how can I make it different? Okay, so now we'll uh, go ahead and see. So the first tip I want to show you is the one which I made for Greenpeace. So this is for the social media platform. And they came to me saying that uh, we, we want to address the issue of GMO mustard. This was back in uh, year 20, uh, I think 17 or 18. So this is the strip that I made for them. So it is a young boy asking the, his parents, can you also scold the government for playing with food? And uh, if you see, when I say smaller details, uh, there is GMO written on the newspaper. And because it was a one-time cartoon, I tried to add some details with shading and all that, which I would not do in my regular publishing. And the reason why cartoons are drawn in a very simple fashion is because they have to be created so fast. It's very difficult if I make like a very detailed, nice canvas painting with all kinds of shading. It will, you know, the cartoons, it, it will be very difficult to complete. So cartoonists always come up with a style which they can quickly execute. So next time you observe a cartoonist, you'll see how he doesn't paint the whole picture. He leaves some white space. Looks nice, but actually he's also done it for very practical reasons. So this is uh, the one for Greenpeace. Now I'll show you the cartoon strips which were made for Hindu. So they were called Ecotism. 
is the first one. This is, I can say, almost a silent uh, cartoon. Now, I'll tell you a, a critical way of observing this. So, this cartoon I had initially made in a single panel. So, both this guy and this particular tree stump, which says we have no branches, were in the same frame. But when my editor told me, no, the cartoons have to be uh, two panel, I had to kind of force them into two panels. But here, this cartoon would work even with a single panel. So in your strip also judge, do you really need two frames? Do you really need three frames? Can it work in a single frame also? And uh, ideas can come from anywhere. You know, for me, this idea where it came, I was traveling in the in a long distance uh, train and uh, there was a lady sitting in front of me with a jewelry shop bag, uh, which said, uh, we have no branches. Or in Marathi, it said, amchi chakha kuthes nahi. And then the word branches uh, stuck to me and I thought, what if it's a poster on a tree that is uh, cut? Yeah. So that's how this idea came to me. I'll move ahead. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so here it's a two panel cartoon. I've, if you see, uh, in many cartoons I do a comparison. Because um, the, the audience I'm aiming at are people who are urban dwelling and I want them to see another picture also. And this is after me uh, watching some documentaries on Mount Everest and climbers of Mount Everest and also my visit to two dump yards, which I can never forget. Uh, and here in these documentaries, and I'm absolutely not, uh, you know, putting down their efforts. Like, it's one of the most incredible athletic feats to do, to reach to summit Everest. But at the same time, I felt that there are people who are living, I can say, as difficult lives every single day, because there are communities who, you must be knowing, there are communities who live in the dump yard. And uh, they are very used to that smell, they climb, they pick, that's an everyday thing for them. So uh, that's why both of these are called the hardest mountains to climb. The third one. Again, like a thought from now we have products for everything. <laughs> Any small th ailment we have, we have five products for it. And uh, people who lived before us lived much longer lives without products because nature did things for them. So that is where this idea came from. If you see the style of my illustration, sometimes you'll see sometimes I had le less time before my deadline. So it's a little fatter and quicker strokes versus sometimes I have done very detailed drawings that I had. I had more time to do that. So you can see these small observations you can make. This is a silent cartoon. This is uh, personally one of my favorites. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you want ideas to come up to a certain level and I, I think I, I have not been able to match <laughs> again to this level, but I love, but this will work only in an Indian context, you know. Uh, India may, uh, you know, when a person passes away, we put the, uh, put the garland around their frame, so it very quickly strikes to an Indian, but it won't work as well for the out of India audience. Here, uh, yeah, in the first frame, this person says, I will get the door. These must be our first customers. So it's a real estate uh, agent or, you know, uh, they're looking for bookings for their new building. And uh, they see there are all animals that have come because the board says Greenwoods Residency, lush green lawns, parks for children and green within the city. If you see, most uh, ad campaigns of uh, you know buildings will now say how green they are, which is a big irony in itself. So that is where uh, this idea came from. And very recently, I saw a holding which said that the, the building's name was Sanctuary. So <laughs> we, we are going very nature friendly with the naming. <laughs> This is also from a real life uh, situation that I saw around me. Uh, I saw uh, a, a local politician had built a big cement structure of trees 
you know a big cement sculpture with three four trees saying save trees and uh, it didn't uh, make sense to me because obviously we could have uh, it, it could have been a real green space instead of using uh, a cement structure to denote that so that is where that this idea came from And uh, this, uh, again, anti-pollution phase wash, you are, I didn't have to think much, it's just uh, like uh, when, when you have to invent, you know, I think I, it, we keep inventing plasters and bandages after bandages instead of addressing the key key issue which is down under. So that is, this is trying to show that. go next so i will not talk of so unless you have not uh, been able to read please tell me i'll go back i'll just keep moving ahead you must have uh, seen this uh, scenario in uh, in any of the sanctuary visits This is like a little light, light-hearted humor uh, if in comparison to the others. <laughs> this kind of it's like taking, uh, you know, you, you must have seen some figures like that where one one green thing that is done is like really uh, promoted. Uh, but if you really believe in the concept, you in, automatically implement it in all aspects of your life and not just in one place. This is uh, inspired from uh, Mumbai's traffic <laughs> where I see so many empty cars. If you note that, you know, what happens is when you decide, uh, you know, when you decide to create strips regularly, like for me, it was a deadline, we are all, when there's a deadline or a submission, we are always on fire, right? So for me, every Thursday was my submission. So my eyes, ears and brain was fully wide open to pick up ideas and ideas would come. Like I don't think I've ever faced a time where I was out of ideas. Because sometimes when I got two, three ideas, I made sure I noted them down. So you also keep a habit of doing that. And now my earlier has to do weekly cartoons. Now I do bi-monthly. So automatically I see that my observation skills have, you know, reduced a bit. Like it's gone lazier than it was earlier. Yeah, I should improve it. But I'm just saying that's how the brain works. So if you really want to, you discipline yourself that no, every week I'm going to have one. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Oh God, so I have to rush. Okay, so um, what did I say? Uh, yeah, so if you decide, then you will automatically observe more things and ideas will come to you. This is uh, our new social media generation. <laughs> this is how we are taught in school or how I myself learned in school. I see the things we learn about sustainable development, we have made big science projects and written 100 marks papers and all on those. It's, it's nothing new to us. But at that time, we didn't learn it with that intention. I'll go a little faster. You uh, just let me know if you've not read. This, uh, this is a thought that came to me. Are, are the fish happier in the in a, in a fish tank in my house where they don't have enough space to swim, or are they happier outside in the water, which is 
which is polluted. So I just, and so I'll make it quick. So this guy tells, uh, how did you end up buying so much? You had such a short shopping list. He's saying the last one made all the difference. He, we do that, right? Anything on sale, we think, oh, maybe it's needed. Let's, let's take it, let's take it. And this is uh, how we interact on social media. Everyone really is uh, all pro, yes, we won't do that. And the same replies are given when uh, in real life they asked if they want a plastic bag. This is a uh, bird watching in the city. So this person says, do you see a yellow biscuit packet? Now look to its right. You see a floating mineral water bottle. Exactly to the bottom is a patch of purple dye. Close to it is a rubber tire piece and the sandpiper is feeding right next to it. Can you see? And so this one says, oh yes, yes. And this is this is not even an idea. This It's exaggerated a bit, obviously, for the cartoon strip, but uh, this is how we bird watch over here because most birds come around Nalas and that's, that's the sad reality of bird watching in the city. And this, uh, they say like a Western, uh, say a person come or maybe some sort of a, a supervisor inspector who's come saying that, oh, so much of green is still left. Uh, no wonder your area is still considered to be underdeveloped. You know, that's why the grayer the city, the more prosperous we call them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, nowadays on packages, you see, right? No artificial color, no hair, this, no that. And then this person is wondering that I'm happy for this product, but I'm thinking what I've been consuming all this while. Like many times you see chemical names and then you realize, oh, this thing doesn't have, does it mean that all the other packages have it? So this is what we've been eating. So this two bucks, two pests, I'm asking, uh, is this supposed to kill us when we eat that fruit? So this one says, it, it yes, kill us and eventually the person who eats the fruit also. Yeah, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, so this is father is telling the, uh, the son is telling the father that come to the city with me. You have good medical facilities and uh, chances of getting good medical treatment increases 10 times. So he says the chance of me needing those facilities will also increase 10 times if I come to the city. Here they say that uh, I don't need a historian for our city. You just see old building then you know what was there in front of that. And I see many buildings like the pond view, sea view, sea view, in front of sea view there are 10 more buildings, and then they'll see. This is uh, for contractors who have lost documents, we just have to get the checks, just explain them. So it is proof enough to show that you worked here. So this is about the workers who work in mines. So this, uh, the moon, uh, this, the sun, uh, you know, the planet is saying people don't look at sunsets anymore. So it's saying, yeah, they're still looking at set, setting sun in one way. So this is the setting sun we look at. This one says, uh, how far is a national park? So Moleman says, few years ago it was right here. Now I have to go five kilometers ahead and take a left. So I just, uh, sorry, I'm not able to show all the strips uh, because we're falling short of time. I wanted to make something. So th these are on my website, uh, ashwinimanan.com. So uh, please visit that and you see the rest of the strips. Now what I'm going to do is I want you to pick your paper. Uh, Hitesh, can you give me five more minutes and, uh, you know, give me five extra minutes and I sure, want sure. them to do something. So now uh, what we'll do is, your subject for now is melting ice caps. Okay, I want all of you all to think of a cartoon strip for melting ice caps as the subject. You know, the North Pole is melting, the polar bears are getting affected, uh, water levels are rising. Uh, so, this is a usual process you should follow. Read more about the subject, decide what message you want to convey, start doodling some storylines. The more concepts you think of, the better. Refine your strip. And uh, show it to a few people. Just test, are they getting what you're trying to convey? And then make your final artwork. So I'll give you all five minutes. 
and I want at least one or two of you to share a cartoon idea with me. Okay, so it's twelve ten, twelve fifteen. You will uh, show me, uh, and what I'll do in the meanwhile is I'm just uh, you know scribbling some uh, simple drawings for you uh, based on this uh, subject. So when I say uh, melting ice caps, so you know, this is how you can show in very simple manner. I'm showing ice caps. This is the landscape. I'm showing some ice. Uh we are we are not able to see those oh, it's, oh you're not able to see sorry. only the presentation is uh, viewed oh okay maybe you have to share the whole uh, yeah yeah whole story. Okay. now yes yes it's visible now okay yeah so this is what i was drawing uh, so just melting ice caps like that now don't Try to exactly copy this because you will have your own unique style. So that is important. Try to find your own style in this. And I'm making like flat land. Uh, you know, you see some. Meanwhile, do think of an idea. Okay, uh, let's can see you, if anyone. Can you just help me out? Yes, can, yes, sure. Can you put up some few bottle caps popping out and some floating bottles? Floating bottles. Stuff. Yes, yes. I like that. Yes. So. This is the now floating bottle cap will be a little difficult to see uh, show. So what we'll do is we'll show a crushed floating bottle, yeah. like it's a damaged bottle. And uh, I'll show some, uh, you know, water wrinkles around it. So water wrinkles around it. And some skeletons on the uh, mountain. Skeletons, okay. So uh, I'll, what I'll do is I've drawn this already, so I'm just rubbing some okay. area. And on this end, I'm showing a skull. skull okay. Most easily oh. recognizable. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, just few lines, big eye sockets. It's a little scary, but these uh, bones like that. Yeah. And to make it funny, you know, see now when I make this skull, it looks a little scary. Now to make it funny, you see what I'll do. I'll just draw some excess. See, it's looking less dangerous now. Or I can show a sadder face. You know, see, now it's become a little light-hearted. Anything else you all want me to draw? I think uh, what Mr. Kedar said was uh, good that I can I can draw what you all want me to draw for your idea. These are called movement lines. Okay, now see, uh, image. See, if I would have just drawn the bottle, it would have looked very static. When as I'm adding these lines, they immediately look like they are floating. And if it's there's a little bit of wind, suppose. So I'll draw wind like that. Things which are invisible, you can draw in dotted line. And maybe the bottle is moving because of it. So moving. And uh, I'm dead uh, wood. Dead wood, dead wood, I can draw. Like after that. the skull, after the skull. Yeah. On top of this? Yeah, so this place where you are putting the bottle. Okay, okay. Okay, I just draw it. Uh, so it's a floating wood, is it? Yes, yes. Okay, so it's like a drift So, but that's what you find around the uh, downhill of Himalayas and other mountainous regions. Right, right. So uh, again, uh, whenever you draw trees and all, don't draw straight lines because they are very organic, uh, you know, very organic uh, pieces, elements of nature. See, I'm just drawing lines like that, and it's uh, again for floating. I'm drawing some. Maybe you can add some texture of the wood. In your uh, strip, you must have seen usually if you're drawing a single panel, you want to draw square, you want to draw double panel like I did for the Hindu, uh, or you want to draw three panels, that's also fine. Uh, you must have seen in these cartoon uh, comic strips that you read as a kid, they have this section on top that is to introduce uh, this morning or today or tomorrow, you must have seen I did that to introduce things. And here you draw your subject, whatever drawing you want to do, and then here you can draw your dialogue. So I didn't draw any speech bubble. Those are called speech bubbles. I didn't draw them. Uh, I I directly wrote my text. My text was written like that, and there was a line like that. It said, "It's like come on, I'm turning this into a man on the mountain." See immediately. It's like he's saying something. 
a simple way of drawing human figure a uh, stick figure is basic so you can maybe start with stick figure like that but make a stick figure little better by giving little volume so this is a man see see i have not drawn anything complicated just a man with uh, maybe hands on the hips waiting so there's a shirt maybe he has a cap okay uh Maybe if he's uh, looking here, you can immediately show a nose. Uh, Indian Indian woman in a sari. Uh, so this is very long shot. I'm not drawing close-ups. So Indian woman in a sari. Maybe she's yeah, she has a bag in her hand. You see, so. Uh, Try to, if you sketch more of these, no, sketch, sketch children, maybe she's, uh, there's a, there's a child walking with her. So, children will be more chubby. So, okay, this is strange. So, so something like that. It's not the best, but yeah, you, you, you got my point. So, just see. Uh, proportions are important to see what height you're drawing and uh, always you know uh, another thing what I do is try to give a shadow at the base like you see for this we give these movement lines it looks like it's on some surface so now this, if you're drawing shadow here maybe the sun is over here this man's uh, shadow can be in the back maybe the light is right in the front see even without detailing this is how you can bring some uh, realism into your uh, artwork. And uh, many good cartoonists would also write the text. I have used a font uh, because it's very really time consuming for me to write the text. But uh, if you can try to write text in capital letters, so say, see, this, this is something, this is how I would write. And the Text should be very legible. Don't write in fonts or handwriting which people can't read. Ideally, use this capital style only because it matches the illustration. If you use very decorative font, no, it looks it looks too much. Now you see other cartoonists' books and just see how how very simple their text writing style is. Okay, and uh, expressions. How do you draw expressions? So I just uh, make this smaller. Okay. expressions uh, now you see in the face you know what do you think is the most expressive part of a face on a face anyone from most expressive part of a face anyone eyebrows yes eyebrows eyes so you see I just drew a face uh, I didn't draw an exact circle like a slight shape and maybe uh, and you, I first draw the nose because then that's like the center point of the face. So then other things are fi fixed accordingly. So here's a just a straight face. And then here's a simple smile. Uh, maybe we'll make her a school girl. And she has this choti. See, I didn't I didn't draw the entire plates. I just drew the choti like that and you immediately know it's a, a you know, it's a choti. So neck. And maybe this is a school uniform. This is a school uniform. Okay. Uh, so this is class monitor. See, so just adding details. I'm not thinking. So this is, don't do this directly when you're thinking of the strip. You can practice this uh, on your own because you have to develop a style. And now we'll make, now you've seen this. Now uh, I'll make an expression, okay? Uh, make two, three expressions. So, and the same one. Now, the moment I draw eyebrows, you see how, how much our expression will change. And just do one line and just see the change in the expression. That's why it's very important to, uh, though, because in cartoon strips, we draw very less lines. 
but those lines are very important because they convey a lot. Now, same person, and I draw two eyebrows, what happens? Okay, she's little naughty, here she's very naughty. Okay, uh, same person, now I'll just invert her smile and you see what will happen. Now, same smile, I make the mouth more open. And now you see what happens. Okay? And in the same one, now I turn the eyebrow reverse. And now you see what will happen. Do you see the difference? Here she's, here she's almost sad, surprised. Here she's angry, aggressive. So, you can keep experimenting like that. I am always trying to find ways to show expressions, very minimal strokes. Like people can draw a sweat drop, extra sweat drop. So, she's nervous about something. And in the same one, she can be, say, she can be crying maybe. How will I show her crying? So now the eye will be small. When you crying, your eyes are never open. And uh, what I'll do, I'll turn this one into uh, extreme laughter. In crying, how your eyes are small, no? Same way, extreme laughter also, eyes become very small. And almost like an inverted. Uh, see, now I have not done laughter, but this is like an eye-to-eye -eye smile. So... Uh, so I just change this into, and if you like a very staunch laughter, you can do this. Now her body is too erect for that kind of laugh. Like I would do a little bend in the body also, but you you get a rough idea, right? So yeah, so that's it. And I think uh, one more thing uh, I I want to uh, tell you all is before you start any drawing exercise. Uh, make uh, some sort of uh, you know line uh, sorry. Just a second okay. yeah so before you start any drawing exercise uh, give your hands some warm up like you do before your workouts no so uh, straight lines curve lines so this is good to practice uh, in it's, it's good meditation also just infinity, infinity sign. So you're practicing your curves. Try to draw concentric circles, one below the other. So you know the control of your hand and your pen. Uh, and uh, you see my pen, my cartoon strips were not colored. They were black and white. Uh, so if you want to do without gray, only black. So this is how you color. You do hatching. It's shading, but using only lines and strokes. So, I'm going to hatch here. You feel this side, there's light coming from here and there is shadow here. Same uh, you can do for circle. Hatch, hatch nicely. You see RK Lakshman's uh, cartoons, most beautiful hatching styles. Just, and he did it with brush, ink and brush. So, there, there is no room of error. Right now, if you see, I can easily erase, erase this. In ink and brush, there is no scope of errors. So, it's very tough. I can only get better at it with practice. So, yeah. So, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, I have covered most things. And does anyone have ideas uh, to share with me? Plenty. Yes. Plenty. Can we hear? Yes, great, great. Can we hear? I think what we, uh, you know, especially in the context of sustainability, uh, what we need to uh, kind of think, one, I shared just now about the ice cap, but I think what we need to take up issues like transport, water, sewage, solid waste, mm -hmm. land, the trees, uh, I have just posted on your WhatsApp also. So I think 40 years down the line, uh, how the uh, things have changed. Instead of writing uh, uh, no, long books and stories and write-ups and publications, I think uh, we need to create uh, 
more of these powerful shot of what I always call the punch, yeah. including the cartoon, which is the punch. I think we need to do that because it, it things go down properly. I, I have with you and whatever I have learned or shared or written on entire, at least the context is more on urban, so fair amount of forest and fair amount of rural areas, of course, uh, across the country and across the globe. Let's, let's do that. Let's put it. Beautiful. Yes. Awesome. Great, Three great. Cheers. Three cheers. Thank you. Three cheers. Thank you. So this room will uh, close in 50 seconds, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. It was a very great session. We learned a lot. And the, uh, all the strips were very beautiful. Okay? Some were very funny. <laughs> and they were cute. I liked yeah. it and enjoyed it. And I think everybody did in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if, 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 uh, if you could post your link of your website and social media handles we could follow, that would be great. Yeah, it's A S H V I N I at ashwinmenon.com. I've added it in chat. Sure. Thank you, Shimon. It's in the speaker bio also. Uh, yeah.